So in the last video, we were talking about a bundle's semantic versioning. In this video, we're gonna be talking about a bundle's life cycle. So let's take a look at that. So a bundle is state aware. A bundle has a number of different states that it can traverse through. Now in traditional OSGI, what we can do is use this thing called a bundle activator. A bundle activator is an API that can be used to control the different life cycle states of a bundle. In LifeRay, we do not use the bundle activator, but just to kind of get an idea of how this works, we're gonna take a look at it. So here within my class activator that's implementing the bundle activator, we're gonna have a method here start and a method stop that's gonna be helping us control the, the life cycle of a module. As it, those methods are called, it's going to then uh, print something in the console. So let's talk about those different states that a bundle can go through. So we see the six here. The ones that I really wanna emphasize to you guys are the installed, the resolved, and the active. Those are gonna be the three big life cycle states that we're going to be interacting with from now until the end of this whole series. So keep those three in mind. We're gonna talk about them a lot. Let's take a look here at this diagram that shows us how a bundle traverses through the different states of a life cycle. So we're gonna start here at the dot. Let's assume that we have a bundle and then we are deploying this bundle into the OSGI container. Once inside the OSGI container, it's gonna hit the installed state. So the installed state lets us know that, hey, this bundle has made it into the OSGI container but that's it. Now during the installed state, what's happening is the OSGI container is looking for any dependencies that needs to be uh, resolved. Let's assume all of those dependencies are resolved, uh, then the transition transitions to the next state, resolved. So the resolved state just means what I just described. The bundle has found all of its dependencies. It's ready to go, but it hasn't been told to start yet. So if you see a bundle in the resolve state, that's what that means. Dependencies are good to go, just waiting for a signal to start the module. Once the module gets a start signal, either programmatically or manually, it will then go to a transition state starting. It'll then hit the active state, and it's here in the active state that everything is all systems go. So when a bundle is in the active state, this means that everything that it's supposed to do, it should be doing. If it's not, we're gonna have to do a little bit of debugging or some, or take a look out at the logic of our code. But these are the three states uh, that I wanna emphasize for now. So a bundle lifecycle, as mentioned, or kind of implied, can be managed, right? We can use a command line or a web-based management tool to help us with that. So we as developers, we as programmers, or even as uh, administrators can go in and manipulate or control the different lifecycle states. There are two big tools that are gonna help us with this. One of them is going to be the GoGo -Go shell. The GoGo -Go shell allows us to telnet or connect into the OSGI container, and allows us to take a peek inside. So the GoGo -Go shell is a subproject of Apache Felix. Apache Felix is kind of a, bigger uh, project in the Apache's OSGI world. So this is kind of what it looks like here. Um, once I connect uh, using the GoGo -Go shell, it allows me to take a look inside of the OSGI container. Uh, right now we don't see too much, right? But typing a specific command like LB allows us to see the bundles that are within the OSGI container. So how do we manage the uh, life cycle of our bundles, right? You might be thinking, hey, Eddie, you told me you, you can use the GoGo -Go shell, um, but once I use the GoGo -Go shell, what do I do? So this is where uh, we're gonna list off a couple of different commands here. So we have seven commands. Uh, let's highlight a couple of the important ones. Down here at the bottom, we have start and stop, right? So if a bundle is within the resolve state, you can start it. And if a bundle's in the active state, but it's not quite doing what you expect it to do, maybe you accidentally put a infinite loop 
in uh, in your code and it's causing things to crash, maybe you're gonna wanna stop that bundle. But let's take a look at this diagram here to kind of further explain how some of these things work. So using the installed command, let's say you have a bundle on your desktop, you opened up your command line or your terminal, you can then use the install command to install a bundle using the GoGo -Go shell. Let's say you installed it and you've added the necessary dependencies to get us away from the installed state to the resolve state. Maybe for some reason the OSGI container didn't pick up the dependencies and you need to refresh things. You can use the refresh or the update command to have the, mod, uh, to have the bundle do just that. You can also type the resolve command to try to get the bundle from the installed to the resolve command. You can also again use update and refresh to kind of transition between resolved and installed if things are kind of acting a little bit funny between the two. If you're in the resolve state and you need to get to the active state, you can type start as we mentioned earlier. If things are going south or if things aren't working the way expected in the active state and you wanna stop the bundle, you can, you can just type the stop command. If you wanna get rid of the bundle altogether, get it out of the OSGI container, you can then, once the bundle is resolved, uninstall it using the uninstall command. So let's summarize some of the big ideas, big concepts that we talked about in this video and in the previous one. So OSGI bundles always have a unique identifier, right? That's defined in a bundle's manifest file with those two specific headers through the symbolic name and the bundle version. Each number in the semantic versioning of a bundle has a specific meaning, right? We have major, minor, micro, and qualifier. Uh, dependencies shared between bundles require defined version numbers, right? We talked about parentheses versus square brackets. Bundle activators are classes that implement the uh, bundle activator interface. Again, in the LifeRay world, we don't really deal with these bundle activators all too much, but when we're taking a look at the basics of OSGI, it is a little bit helpful to see how the bundle activator works to kind of see where we come from. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at an exercise to help solidify the ideas that we've talked about in the previous videos. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.